Next, we have a friend of Rupert by the name of Aveta, who's going to tell us about the magical and mundane properties of sage. So let's see what she has to say. Merry meet everyone. How are you today? My name is Aveda. I'm the owner of the Crystal Spider and I'm a school teacher. More importantly, I'm a friend of Rupert. Today, we're going to start our journey through my magical garden with my favorite herb, sage. Why is it my favorite? Because it is the foundational herb. It is the most important herb in my magical kit. But it comes in lots of different varieties. There's common sage, which you see right over here. And I have some cut. Common sage is wonderful when you're making a sausage or if you're cooking a turkey. It smells delicious. There's a tri-colored sage, which I don't know if you can see the beautiful little bits of purple in it. It also has that wonderful same aroma, but a little more spice to it than our common sage. Again, these, more for cooking. But we're here to talk about magic. So, we're going to talk about white sage. White sage, you find more down in the southwest. Now, I'm here in almost sunny Florida. <laughs> but... We use white sage whenever we're starting a ritual, whenever we want to cleanse and bless an object, whenever we want to cleanse or bless our house, whenever we have tools that have been kind of overused and just need a really good cleaning, or if someone gives us something and we want to make it our own, we want to cleanse it of everyone else's energy so that we can empower it with our own energy. So how do we do that? It's a good question, isn't it? Well, we do it through smudging. I have leaves of sage, I have little twigs of sage, and I have my bundle of sage. And I always put them safely into my smudging bowl. Now, smudging involves my husband's favorite element, fire. So, we have to be careful because we're using fire. Why? Because fire can burn us. What does that mean? That means you get a grown-up before you try this. You always want to make sure that you have mom or dad's help before we do smudging. It's usually a good idea to do it as a family anyway. So. This is a beautiful brand new smudging wand. We're going to keep that one for later. We're going to use one of my old favorite ones, and as we can see, it's very well used and burned. We light our wand, give it a nice little blow, and we'll see our little trails of smoke coming off of it. And I brought one of my crystal wands, which is one of my favorite magical tools. And we're going to smudge my wand so that we can cleanse it so that it's ready to use the next time that I need to do energy work. And you see I let the smoke wind up around it, just washing away all of the energy from before. You can also, while holding your bowl so that none of the little embers drop off and cause a fire, walk through your house and bless and cleanse each room, letting the smoke fill the room in all of the corners and in all of the doorways. And my princess decided she wanted to cleanse her new favorite dragon, so she let us borrow it. It's cold here today, so our wand is not wanting to stay lit. So I light it one more time. Now, our dragon is a stuffy, so you have to be extra careful and keep him far away where only the smoke gets near him. Our stuffy is a friend that we found. So we don't know where his energies come from. 
So we're just going to cleanse him and make sure that he's ready to empower with our energies. But our princess just fell in love with him when she found him and she had to bring him home. Well, I think that might be all we have time for today. I want to thank you for listening, and I want to thank you for being a friend of Rupert. We'll see you next time.